Now turning to the uh, upcoming holiday season once again, where uh, families are getting together. Many of us can expect old sibling rivalries to pop up again. I love my sister. Plus, I I'm love not my brother. This year, yeah. <laughs> our sibling relationships are all different. Of course, they last our entire lives, and also because brothers and sisters know each other in a very special way. I have a younger sister. I'm right smack in the middle. I am the baby of the family. I'm the, the youngest by over 10 years. The favorite growing up, I mean, I'd have to say me, right? <laughs> I would say she was probably the favorite because she was the girl. My brother got out of trouble all the time, and that was sort of the indication that he was my parents' favorite. I think my mom and dad would like to say that they love all of their children. <laughs> Do I have rivals with my siblings? Yeah. Sure when I talk to them, which isn't very often. I wouldn't say there's competition with each other. There's drama, don't get me wrong. <laughs> there's always drama. She was always this annoying little thing that was kind of following me around. Uh, now she, uh, I think we've grown closer as we've gotten older. I think my parents are now have, treat themselves like the favorite. <laughs> so when we all get together for Thanksgiving this weekend, I think it will be uh, very similar to how it was when we were growing up, but you know, with the addition of a few alcoholic beverages and maybe a slightly later bedtime. <laughs> That's pretty much all you add to it, right? Joining us now is Time Magazine senior editor and science writer Jeffrey Kluger. Uh, he wrote a book on it called The Sibling Effect, which is a fascinating look um, at, at, at how brothers and sisters interact, and not just today, but, but in history. Jeffrey, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Um, is it when, when we all get together again, is, is it like we never left again? Absolutely. We may have grown up, decades may have passed, but keep in mind the foundations for those relationships, like the foundation of a building, were poured 30 and 40 years ago. You may build on top of it, your life circumstances may change, but you are the same people that you were many years ago, and when you're together, those old dramas will get played out. How much of the person that you are and the relationship that you have with your siblings is determined by your birth order, by your development? Well, birth order is a huge factor, and this is one of the areas in which lay people, all of us, came to this realization even before scientists did. So when parents observe that middle sibs tend to be a little more lost in the thickets, tend to have to, to fight for attention more, that older sibs, the oldest, tend to be more striving and serious, and the youngest tend to be the wild children, the most charming and dis disarming and charismatic. Those patterns do hold, they are very real, and they're ways that kids work to maximize the power of their position. They almost always hold these patterns. They do, so it's it is, pretty it is, incredible. It is uncanny how they hold. Is, does it change, what you're talking about twins or triplets? Twins and triplets are a, they're, they're sort of the mystical part of the, of the sibling pairing. Yes, twins, um, identical twins particularly, uh, are very, very powerful in their similarity, in part because they come into the world with identical behavioral templates. Their software, their operating system, is exactly the same. As a result, if one child is a thrill seeker, the other one is inclined to be. If one child tends to, to, to be more of a more conservative, the other one will tend to be as well. You, as, as a parent, I yeah. don't think you ever want one child to feel that you prefer them over another. Right. Um, so how do you, as a parent, help in the development of each of your children, no matter where they fall in that birth order, and no matter how true they are to, to those stereotypes? Well, that's a really good question. Now, the fact is, and you, you alluded to this a little bit, favoritism is a very powerful, very real, and unavoidable phenomenon for all kinds of natural and evolutionary reasons. Parents tilt more toward one child than the other. The key is, that kids need to be need to feel favored in one domain or another. Mm -hmm. So if dad's an ex-jock and his oldest son is a football player and he just adores his oldest son, maybe the same boy drives him crazy when he's just trying to sit down and have a conversation with him because the kid's got too much restless energy. Well, dad may then want to spend more time with mm -hmm. his younger daughter who's more thoughtful and more reflective and a little academic. Over the course of a childhood, the son may still have been the favorite, but not by much, and the younger daughter still feels like in certain domains Means I was dad's princess. And we, we, we don't have much time left, but, but I mean, parents have to pay attention to it, but, but the kids can too, the siblings themselves, so they understand the a dynamic. Absolutely, and you have to be mindful of that, and this is a good thing that comes with, with getting a little bit older. Once you get past the point of thinking to yourself, one day my little brother is going to change and isn't going to hog the conversation. One day my little big sister is, is going to change and isn't going to be so moody. Once you get past that and say, these are who they are, just as I'm who I am, yeah. and I can move around and work through these things and love them despite their shortcomings. A lot, a lot of good experimentation yeah. coming up on Thursday for families. Exactly. Now they can take this information with It's a real-time social experiment. Nice to have you with us this morning. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me.